All right, so um, I can, there's a square. Whenever I click, and it's not going away. ADHD brain, anyway, it's uh, taking whatever, it's whatever. Um, this is d, &D part two, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, when we last left off, um, it was session seven and I was like, oh, I could have made session eight, even though I was like tired and stumbling and stammering over words, I couldn't have made session eight, but I wanted to because it would have been closer, but yeah. Um. Uh, when we last left off, though, um, the ball breakers have just defeated Chet, the god of wealth and inheritance, um, Avengers Assemble style. At first, Igni and Elroy were getting their asses whooped thoroughly, and then Carton showed up, just saying, oh, sh god damn it, <laughs> and, and just like, sh shield bashing. Chet's shin, pushing him back. Dante showed up later, just murdering him. Well, not actually murdering him. It was uh, Alvar, I believe, who had the last shot. Um, session eight, a life for a life. Laloid suddenly has a sister, and um, the party was tasked with finding her. Her name is Joy, and um, on the way to fighting, on not fighting, finding joy. God, what I would give. <laughs> um, the party was stopped by a giant, a giant Goliath named um, Squid Game, and Squid Game. Uh, <laughs> Alvore rolled a persuasion check um, against Squid Game, and it. Guess what? Another not twenty, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, Squid. Alvar says it'd be soup. Oh, it was a funny interaction. It was um, Squid Game was like um, yeah, sorry guys, I work for Fabian and uh, I can't let you in. Nothing personal. And Alvar's like, yeah, but it would be super cool if you did though. Like super super cool. Um and. So Squid Game said, all right, yeah, sure, I'll let you in, haha, -ha, I'll let you in. And um, so Squid Game went in and Carton, uh, who still has the, the fire goddess Aqua in him, uh, just got jumpy and set the forest on fire after hearing a noise. And um, hold on. There was, they they were about to die of smoke inhalation, and but they managed to get out out of the fiery part, um. And uh, they stumbled on to Vivian and Joy together. Um, there was a small scuffle, and Joy got stabbed in the neck, and Carton saved, Carton saved her though, and they tried to fight Vivian for a hot second, um. Apparently there was like more than one squid game, if that makes sense. See what I did there? Like more than one squid game because there was more than one squid game in in, in the show Squid Games. Um yeah, I'm I, I I'm very original. <laughs> I'm I'm just kidding, I think I'm original. Hope so. Anyway, um Vivian killed them and just like pew 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 pew, pew from the trees. Um, fiery blood just like started falling down because they were in the trees and Vivian killed them. They fought Vivian for a little bit, got their asses kicked. Uh, and Viv Vivian teleported away. Um, they stopped the fire and then Vivian appeared again. She manifested a wall of force and just pushed it down onto Elroy and Carton trying to crush them. And um <laughs> Dante 
who just spawned in uh because dante's player just joined the just joined the session just like snuck up behind her with the invisibility cloak and just like clocked her <laughs> um <laughs> Everyone got up because, you know, she was unconscious, and then they started just, like... <laughs> they just, like, started beating the fuck out of her while she was laying down on the ground unconscious. <laughs> and, um, this awakened his, her stand, uh, Star Platinum, and she stopped time to get out of there. <sighs> uh, with a nature check, since they were lost in the woods, um, Dante led everyone to... Another quaint small town. I know. Very original. Dante talked to the merchant and uh, he got a Yankee uh, with no brim and a Yankee with just the brim. Um, and a paper boat hat, a cat, cat ears, and a cat tail, which he never took off for the entire thing. Um, Dante went through this entire session um, in Red Monk's robe, some antlers, uh, a little viney scarf, uh, all of this is a red attire, just a red attire, and some cat ears, and a cat tail. <laughs> uh, he was a cowboy. <laughs> um, uh, Carton, Carton was looking for armor, because I remember Carton's character well, not character. Carton's player was asking me for armor, so his armor class would be 20, and so you'd be unhittable. And um, they ran into HR out there. Uh, they also found a, they also entered a very tiny blacksmith's office, and the smith the smith was very rude. And um, saying how yeah, you should probably like leave because you're very smelly and very gross, and I don't like you. And fuck you. And, um, Lloyd started swearing, just like swearing at this guy. Um, just big heck words. And, uh, Elroy just like stop, smacked him on the head, and, uh, Lloyd took it personally and dipped into the woods. He was poorly consoled by Elroy with, um, like a five or something. And, um, then he was snared around the neck by Felix. What? He's still alive? And the end universe explanation for why he's still alive is, uh... Felix was also a nexus or something, so... Yeah. And, uh... Basic bitch. Um, they managed to save Lloyd, and... And, uh, Dante saved him by, uh... Dante has these, uh, magical shoes that I gave him. <coughs> Homebrew. Um, yeah, they, it gives, it makes your base walking speed 40. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, it makes your base walking speed 40. And then your movement, you add your movement speed on top of that, which typically is 30. And, um. <sighs> They're really powerful. Um. Anyway, uh. Elroy was. So. Dante picked up Lloyd, just like zoomed him out of there. And, um. And was trying to find Carton and Laverna, who were shopping for armor. And, um. Elroy was tasked with holding. was just like holding them back. Um. And he was getting his ass whooped. Um. Dante showed back up to try and save Elroy, who was now deaf, but everyone in the Ball Breakers canonically knows sign language because it was so difficult because we had to mute Elroy, um, you know, for immersion, and he was using the, um, the no mic channel <laughs> trying to sign, and we couldn't pick up on that, so, uh, yeah, we all just canonically know sign language now. Um, all right, so Dante followed, um, they, they followed Dante back to, um, to Laverna, Carton, and Lloyd, and, uh, Dante tried to persuade Felix to go get tea, 
just like to fuck off and go get tea. And um, Laverna got Claymore in, th- in the face, killing her instantly. Uh, Lloyd, not Lloyd, Elroy tried to take the Claymore like from her face to, you know, wield a nine foot Claymore. Um, and he rolled in that one and cut his hands. Bitch uh, held his hand out like he was summoning Mjolnir, and he got his claimer back, and uh, Vivian dropped in and just, like, rocketed down a trident at car- uh, Carton uh, while he was talking, and she turned back to walk away, and they all <laughs> took the, <laughs> the attack of opportunity to, to whoop her ass. <laughs> um, should also mention that... Um, that, uh, what's his face? Carton healed Elroy, and Elroy can now hear again. Um, Carton did a patented Ultra Punch, and Dante, excuse me, Dante just like, pow, hit him really hard, and Elroy shot, shot him. Ah, fuck, wrong pronoun. Uh, Vivian... Uh, I'm reading off recaps and paraphrasing. Uh, they, Carton did an ultra, did like an ultra smite punch. Uh, Dante hit her and Elroy shot her. They rolled initiative and uh, Carton, who still, who didn't let go of the trident, just like with a nat 20, <laughs> uh, cut bitch in half with it, killing, killing him instantly and then just like, jabbed it into his face for good measure and then just like stomped on it and i'm like jesus christ man wow i mean i know this is a meteor shower campaign but like chill <laughs> um uh felix said no no you <laughs> that was bitched no mm-mm, no and just like nope out. <laughs> uh um Dante tried to hit him, and Dante fell on his face. Felix ended up getting away, and then the par- the party fought Vivian. Um, Carton gained temporarily temporary control of her trident, and uh, Vivian was just like about a fireball over his face, but he ducked just in the nick of time. But his hat, Alvar's poor cowboy hat, wasn't so lucky. Incinerated, burned to ashes. Um. And neither was Lloyd. Lloyd was burnt out crisp. And, uh, yeah. Dante ended up stunning her. And this gave Elroy the opportunity to put his gun in her mouth. He shot her 12 times, trying to let Carton finish her off, um, turning her face into until she was mush. They eluded her. And, um, yeah. Elroy was was mourning Lloyd, Carton was being just an ass, and uh, Vivian just like appeared again. And also there's like this giant gaping hole because Vivian fireballed a crater into the ground and it went deep, like really deep. Um, Vivian survived and uh, yeah, she used dominate person on Elroy and made him try to make him walk to the edge of the cliff. Um, wait, no, that Vivian was dead. Vivian two came out, and round two began. Um, she threw Carton into a tree, opened up a hole in the ground. Dante expertly maneuvered his way out of danger. And, um, just six of mass gen- and, uh, Dante and Vivian debated about the logistics of mass genocide, just, like, killing a bunch of people because, because of something or not. And, um, it was, I remember I had it in that closet right there because mom was mad and, like, I didn't want to be too loud while she was doing work. So, Yeah. I was, I was just like, yeah, but like, the amount of good things that can come from this, 
not me per se, but me playing Vivian. Um, it was, it was very entertaining. Uh, how can, um, Alroy fell in the hole, and this next part all happens in slow mo- well, anime time, I should say. Carton showed up again, and was given the choice to stop Alroy. I mean, not to stop Alroy, to stop Vivian, or save Alroy. Um, Alroy, who's like, to, right at the edge, of, right at the edge of the of the hole. Um, he has wings, and he can only save one of them. Or only do one. And, um, I remember I usually have battle music playing, and there was none. It was just, like, silence. You could hear the the, room, the fluorescent lights buzzing in the background of your own room. And it's just like, Alright, Carden, you can only save one of them. You can only do one of them. And he took a minute, and he chose Vivian. Uh, so Dante, with his shoes, ended up, like, diving in after after him and um I I I said I gave them all one wish to use and um like as a party Dante said I'll use the wish and um I said think carefully about this and Dante did think carefully about this oh Dante did um he wished that they could turn into birds. So. So. Um. <sighs> he rolled a. Dante's player rolled a d20. And. If it was past 16. They would. They would save. Elroy. They rolled a 15. And so I told them. Are you going to die, or are you going to save yourself? And they said, I'm going to save myself, but what about Alvare? I'm like, at the last second, last possible second, Alvare's just falling backwards, his uh, cowboy attires fluttering upwards, looking like, looking like a cape, um, looking like a cape crusader falling to their death. Um, Dante, you turn into a crow, and you begin flying upwards, because I let them choose which bird they want, and, um, Alvore hit his head on some rocks, and died, and the entire party, the entire party was just, like, shaken <laughs> at this, because I, we were talking about it for a while, um, uh, Alvore's player and I, we were talking about it for a while. And when it actually happened, I'm going to be the first to say, even I was shocked. I didn't expect this. Um, they, Carton, um, Carton ended up punching Vivian 2's head off also, and there was a fake Maldad Mortel. Maldad Mortal, in case you missed in the last video, it was this person who, um, essentially Genghis Khan times Hitler. The racist and, frankly, horrible ideologies of Adolf Hitler, and with the mass murdering tendencies of the Mongolian horde led by Genghis Khan, but instead he was one man and he was the horde. That makes sense. He was the Khan and he was the Horde. Um, in canon, uh, the gods decided to. So, Dark Ages, right? Um, the gods decide to take pity on humanity and grace them with magic in the form of a meteor shower. Hence the name Meteor Shower Campaign. Um, With this meteor shower, uh, anyone who's seen it, or at least heard it, or 
felt the vibrations of of the meteors hitting the ground they got they gained magic and um Maldad was an Elon Musk slash Tony Stark type person in this genius inventor huge philanthropist sort of but um they came to the realization one day that if you can use magic you're superior to everyone else and so there was this nation called Haley it was part of the continent of Lunar uh, where the campaign takes place and it was roughly the size of China and Maldad Mortel in a single day wiped it off the map just entirely and that's called Haley's Reckoning um, as a DM, I reference it a lot, but the players didn't really pick up on it too much, even though I said a lot and keep referring back to it, but yeah, it's whatever. Um, the gods came down from the heavens, and um, they managed to barely, they barely managed to imprison him. And, um, they, while he was imprisoned, uh, it was, I believe, Dio who had, all right, let me read the gods to you. So, we got, that's a Morbius rant, uh, we got Aqua, the goddess of fire, Chet, the god of inheritance, Keigucha, the god of gods, who's basically a, man, a mis uh, Dr. Manhattan type character. Um, Zudo, who's the god of heathens, Hanna, who's the god of bitching, Dio, who's goddess of fairness and emotion, uh, Deu, who's the goddess of light and dark, Deus, who's the god of magic, Bondi, who's the god of nature, and Dwoon, who's the god of everything else. Um, there's also... Stephen, who's the god of liquids and fluids. Um, yeah, so Maldad Mortel. He was killed by one of the gods. You know what? Canon, he was killed by Stephen. Stephen was actually an Uber driver I had who was very nice. So I made him into a god in the campaign. If you're out there, Stephen, love you. <laughs> Love you, Steven. In a platonic way. Um, anyway, it was real to be a fake Maldad Mortel, and, uh, yeah. As Elroy was dying, um, Carton began default dancing on him because, a bit of lore, um, Carton is from this place called Ephoff, where the gods live just, like, casually. Think of it like sort of if there was an Australia just somewhere in the world. Um, <laughs> like there isn't already in Australia. Think of it like, like Australia. Um, not a lot of people go there. It's kind of, well, a magical Australia, I should say. Less spiders and snakes and outback. More so, um, a utopia. Um, ran by the gods themselves and there's not a lot of problems um and Carton began default dancing on um Elroy um which is a sign of respect in Ephoff which is what it's called and where Carton is from he was exiled there from there for some crimes or something um and Elroy's last words were I hate you fucking idiots. Stay safe. And then he died. Um, they, the session ended there, and, um, yeah. <sighs> this, um, session nine, I really wasn't feeling too hot, and I didn't write too much for, uh, for the recap, but long story short, um, Elroy had a friend named Trinket. Um, a bit on Elroy's backstory. Elroy and Vivian were high school sweethearts 
who ended up getting married. And um, Vivian said, hey, I want to move to the big city and have kids. And Elroy's like, yeah, but I got a ranch and I like this ranch. And Vivian hired an assassin, Trinket, to kill him. But um, Elroy and Trinket became besties. And um, yeah, Uh, Vivian ended up running off into the night and, you know, became this way. So Elroy's player took up Trinket's mantle. And, uh, yeah. Um, the party met Trinket and adopted him sort into the group. Um, they met Vivian's clone. And, uh, who, I, I, um, I retconned Maldad Mortel, just like a fake Maldad Mortel, because I realized it wasn't time yet. Um, and... They met this person, Vivian's clone, um, and then they talked to a cop. Dante got thrown into the cops and killed them by getting thrown into them, and they went to a Red Lobster because Vivian's clone is imperfect. There was some impurity whenever the cloning spell was going through. And um, Vivian's clone... Uh, who went by Shredder at the time, but now goes by Victor. Um, his whole thing was to topple the government. And um, they met Carton's um, ex... Not ex, but like... Ex-rival. Well, it's a one-sided rivalry. Fiaa, uh, Felix, Joy, Billiam the... Ne- um, and Billiam the Negotiator. And a few others. Uh, at Red Lobster. They ordered, they ordered, and, um, then they all just, like, left <laughs> before <laughs> they could pay the bill. And, um, they had a fight with a cop outside the king's quarters, and that's where the session ended. I really wasn't feeling too good that day. I probably shouldn't have been DMing because that kind of threw off the whole story, but I managed to fix it up. That session was called Lead Robster. Session 10, Magical Gay Sex. T- uh, Trinket gets past the cop, and Carton ends up holding him off. They met the king, and he's like, yeah, sure, take it over. I don't care. And he essentially made, made the council um, off themselves, which was not fun. And, like, when they were about to pardon Victor and Victor lost control of himself, resetting time to the to the end of session eight. And instead of Elroy dying, like by falling into the hole, Trinket saw what was going to happen, swooped down just like in an oaf dive and traded his life for Trinket. I mean, traded up, uh, traded his own life for Elroy's. Um, they, they were lucky for them, there was a new Rokakaka at the bottom of them, at the bottom of the thing, and they ate it, and there was an equivalent exchange. Um, and now if, um, now Elroy has to roll a d20 with disadvantage to see if he could summon Trinket's powers. He has Trinket spells, and his powers, his shop trinkets trinkets um i'm starting to warm up to that pun yeah always alive um victor used the spell um redo which takes away a significant portion of your health anytime you use it um to Revive the Lloyd, and but the force was also on fire, and Vivian's alive now, and so is Laverna, and Carton tried to save her, and the the um, the ball breakers were given a choice to save Laverna or Victor, who has the possibility to lose control of himself and act out Vivian's will. They ended up saving Laverna without a question. And, um, yeah. 
Victor officially lost control and submitted to Vivian's will. Um, Vivian had this plan to revive Maldad Mortel for some weird reason. Um, so Vivian found um, found Maldad's tomb and they beat the ball breakers to it. After explicitly telling them where it is, they took some time to go shopping <laughs> instead. Uh, while they were busy, like, you know, trying to get into the tomb. Um, Aqua gave Vivian balls, and Vivian, um, made, and Victor just, like, made this thing called Morbius. And, um, (laughs) it's not really, I don't know what to call it. Um, it's not, I don't know what to call it. Um, named Morbius. Morbius was sent to dispatch a cart in Nelroy. And, uh, Morbius's main thing was yelling, It's Morbin time! Um, yeah. They ended up killing him pretty easily. He had 28 health, and they had like 50, and cart. Um, each bullet does, um, does 1d12 damage, and you could shoot it on bonus actions, too. Uh, for all you non-nerds, that basically means for an action, you could just do bang, 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 and usually that'd be it, but for this one, you could be bang, 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 uh, when you're supposed, for a bonus action, you could just do anything really but attack um anyway Laverna ended up getting possessed and Carton's parents were just transported here um the king also appeared just like called in the entire army or just a bunch of people and um HR appeared with Guillermo from what we do in the shadows and ended up fucking him there and uh they broke up there, right there, because Guillermo was like, yeah, no, this public shit, I can't do it. And, um, HR went on a rampage. Just, everyone was gone. Um, Dante and Elroy and the Lloyd, uh, grabbed Laverna and hightailed it out of there. And, um, Carton ended up just, like, hiding behind a tree or something with perfect rolls. Um, I would have thought he was fudging his rolls, but like, we play on Discord and he got, and on the Dice dice channel, he kept succeeding his rolls. Um, he just like, expertly avoided um, the bullets, and when everything was said and done, uh, uh, Victor and Vivian were gone. The passageway to Maldad's tomb Still boarded up, but, you know. <sighs> Carton entered. He opened the door, went inside, and he found a mimic. <laughs> he found a mimic, and he's like, uh, hmm, I know this is a mimic, but I'm going to try it anyway. And it was a mimic, and he got, he got like, four points of damage from it <laughs> before just, like, leaving and thinking it's not even worth it. Um... Carton ended up uh, summoning Maldad Mortal, bringing him back to life, and taking him to Olive Garden. Session 11. Also, everyone else is in Olive Garden, um, including Victor and Vivian. Session 11. It's Morbin time. Um, Maldad Mortel stood up on the Olive Garden table. Keep in mind, he's on, he, he's only wearing, like, just some briefs. Um, and he gives this super long, racist, and edgy speech, saying how magic users are the pure magical race and whatever. And, um, he's like, Anyone who opposes me, sit down. Those who stand with me, stand now. And only six people stood up. Victor and then five others. Um, 
everyone in that Olive Garden was dead. The party and Vivian managed to barely escape. Um, but from ceiling to floor, all painted red. No one survived it. Um, and yeah. Um, uh, they had to ally with Vivian to try and summon Morbius. Morbius was their only. Morbius was supposed to be a failsafe, in case um, Maldad Mortal ended up being, you know, a shithead, which he did. And um, so, since they killed him, they had to revive Morbius. And so, um, whenever Morbius says it's Morbin time, it makes everyone morb. Morbing is just like busting a whole funky move until, like, you pass out and die. And. <laughs> but, uh, the party fell victim to it, except for Dante. And Dante. They were, they were all taking damage at this point, and um, Dante figured out how to break, how to break the um, trance. It's by saying, it's not morbing time anymore. And. <laughs> So they did that. Vivian is unconscious at this point, still morbing. <laughs> and then they, and um, everyone went AFK for a minute, except for um, except for Elroy's character. Uh, they ended up calling the cops because Morbius runs on morbs. The more people who morbs, the stronger he is. So they called the entire cop for the police force, and um, yeah, they're all morbid. Um, so we got uh what's his face? Elroy Elroy stopped Vivian from Morpin and um Vivian begins bullying him and then uh the first punch is thrown and um Vivian slips on the slips on some stairs and bashes her head in and Elroy's like ah Damn, my good alignment. He didn't say that, but, you know, he ended up healing him. I mean, healing her. And, um... Then Vivine used this opportunity to attack him. And they rolled initiative. And they ended up killing Vivian. But, uh... Lloyd... <laughs> Lloyd told uh, Morbius the fuck Morbius rant. And, um... Yeah. Um, near the end of the session, they were talking about fast travel, so I decided to give them horses, and in the form of, a of Tumblr Sexyman's horse shop, um, where they got, uh, two draft horses, one named Bill Cipher and one named The Once Lair. and, um, I had rolled through the door, and it was Maldad's head, Maldad Mortal. Not Maldad Mortal, it was Morbius' head. Maldad Mortal was, wasn't, was, like, not far behind. And now, now dressed in some, uh, proper attire, he, he had this, this sick-ass, um, apocalypse beard. His hair was long and flowy. He really got himself cleaned up. Just, like, freaking amazing. Black Air Force One energy right there. Um, and, uh, yeah, they ended up, uh, killing, killing, uh, Tumblr Sexymans. Like, uh, the, the owner and taking the horse. And, yeah, they barely, they barely made it out of Maldad's range. Um, session 12, Birdism. After a narrow escape from Maldad Mortel, uh, due to the intervention of um S of Stephen, God of Liquids, he just like popped up and's like, "I'll hold him off. You go." Um, they fled to the si to the Stone City of Guilty. Um, and they dropped Laverna off at court because she had jury duty. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, the world is literally about to end, and what you're worried about is jury duty. <laughs> Um, because, um, yeah, the ball breakers are, um, looking for the spot and they find this kid named, uh, Nerf Ranger. 
Nerf was this kid from a previous session who, uh, I, f I think it was like last session. Yeah, it was last session. Um, Nerf was this kid who came up and he was just like, hey y'all, my name is Nerf Ranger. And he shot at them with a Nerf gun and the entire party bullied him and called him a loser and, um, and insulted his hair. So he got a haircut and they found him outside. And Elrain Carton bullied him a little more, and he pulled out an AR-15 and killed the horses. Um, then walking into, the, then walked into the court for his defamation case. Uh, the cops outside uh, attempted to extort Carton, um, but you know that didn't really work because Carton killed the cop. And Lloyd had a small awakening of newfound power. He began to turn things he touched into gold. Um, Nerf Ranger ended up exiting the courtroom because he won the case and killed Lloyd. Um, Carton dropped on him and then tried, then just like turned him into mincemeat, essentially. Um, Lloyd's dad showed up and he was super creepy and he tried to clone Lloyd. Well, he. Yeah, he tried to clone Lloyd, and he, uh, tried, he, um, essentially sentenced Laverna to death by slashing her with, um, a do-everything-backwards knife. This makes you do, like, your actions backwards. So if I were to, if I were to, like... I'm kind of craving a cookie anyway. If I were to take this Oreo right here, and eat it, that was a good Oreo. That was a good Oreo. Um, with the reverse time knife, I would have to make myself throw up and force it to reassemble itself. Do everything backwards, essentially. Even if it's impossible. Like, I have to break the laws of physics. There's nothing I could do about it. Um, so, yeah. Um... Alvary got stabbed in the balls by, um, by the Lloyd's dad's stilettos, um, because the thing about, uh, the Wizardmans, aka the Lloyd's family, they all wear thigh-high stilettos, um, and yeah, got stabbed in the balls with, uh, the stilettos, um, They killed Nerf Ranger also, um, and Elroy tried, Elroy, um, found a hotel, they went to the hotel room, and it was just messy, just absolute mess, heroin needles everywhere, just used condoms all, all over the place, um, so Elroy, Elroy told me, Alright, I want to summon birds to help clean this place up, like I'm a Disney prince. And, um, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, um, so he used Trinket's magic to summon the birds, and they just, like, they just, like, began smacking into the window, crushing each other against their own weight before breaking into the, before, like, shattering the glass. Breaking in and just like uh, filling the filling the room with birds, they're like pecking at each other. Bird corpses are just falling. Feathers are everywhere, <laughs> and um, blood is just dripping all over the place. Um, the birds manage to pick up the um, just pick up the room, but like you know, there's still bird death everywhere, and that that was fine. The party took a long rest, but while they were sleeping, uh, Lloyd's dad 
um, crawled up like from in in between the beds since it was a single bed. Dante couldn't make that session, so it was just Carton and Elroy. They were sleeping head to foot and foot to head, and um, Lloyd's dad just appeared right in the middle of them, and so they just like beat him up, and there was someone at the door. Um, it was it was Laverna because she ended up getting fixed uh, and put out of the loop. Um, and turns out uh, Lloyd was also with her outside the door, and um, yeah, Lloyd couldn't speak, but he had he had Laverna give them a message. Uh, Maldad's horsemen were coming. Those. Si- uh, five or six people who were there. There's now four of them. And they're on their way. It was Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows, this person named Verdens, um, Victor, and Vivian, who was dead. But they didn't know that. Well, I guess they did, but you know, it's whatever. Um, yeah, so it was just Verdens and Guillermo at this time. Uh, yeah. Why no? The fourth horseman isn't isn't there, it doesn't get introduced until later. Um, so they barely they they bolt out out of the hotel, just barely managing to miss them miss the baddies, and then they turn into the friendship being. Uh, they step on Guillermo, killing him, and um <laughs> Verdens ended up um ended up with another one of the baddies uh summoning the bully being and they fought a uh, sort of kaiju fight um session 13 Frankie fucking mermaid the bully being ran away and uh Disassembled itself. Elvory couldn't make that session, so unfortunately. And um, from the crater, there was this new person, Sapphire, who emerged from the ground. Sapphire is relatively important, sort of. They only made a few sessions, so yeah. Um, they are also from F off, but yeah. Um. Laverna looked around and saw an old associate, a business associate of her, um, Frankie, Frankie Mermaid. Frankie Mermaid was her pimp, and back in the day, and Frankie shot her and killed her over five dollars, and then he almost killed Lloyd by beating him with a cane, and um, Sapphire and Carton managed to find its fight its goons. He sent one of his goons after him, and um, Sapphire has this great sword. She swung it at him, and the goon caught it because the goon was in a rage, just like crushed the blade in in his hand, and just like started stop hitting yourself, uh, hitting Sapphire with with it. Um, they ended up killing the goon, and um, here's where. Carton's coldest line comes in. Um, it's ripped straight from um, from Doctor Strange in uh, Multiverse of Madness. Uh, they go back to the to the hotel because they think they forgot something in there, and and Car- the receptionist is being like, "I'm going to have to charge you for going back into the room since you already checked out. Nothing personal." Uh, so how long are you saying? And Car. And she's just, like, being entirely unhelpful. Carton, like, grabs her close. And he's like, All right, do you have anyone at home who loves you? Speak now, because this will determine what happens later. And she's like, I have a wife at home. And so he's like, good. I hope she can live without you. And then casts Burning Hands, which is a 15-foot cone of fire that shoots from your fingertips. Just, like right onto her shirt she's holding her like that and like she just like gets set on fire and dies anyway um they ended up going back to the room where dante showed up 
Uh, and after narrowly escaping Frankie's goons, um, they went to another hotel, and um, Frankie was there, and they killed Frankie by shooting him in the head. Um, but Frankie shot Lloyd. He was stabilized, but, um, you know, he was stabilized, and he wanted to meet his online girlfriend, uh, Minecraft Lover 68 a.k.a. Mini. <sighs> um, he goes over there, and, um, and they're, the duo is, Sapphire had to step out, so, um, it's now Carton and Dante. The duo are watching from a distance, and as, uh, as Mini is there, um, she's, She's a lot taller than Lloyd. She goes in for a hug and then just like stabs him right in the back of the head. Lloyd is dead instantly. Um, the duo run out. Pummel Minnie, who's 13 by the way. And um, and then they begin brainwashing her. Um, yeah, that's that was their goal. Lost one child, get a new one. And, um, they rena- they brainwashed her into being called Minnie. Um, and, uh, they want to rob this museum. Because, you know, we've drifted from somewhat good to just plain evil at this point. Um, session 14, the 9-11 incident. The Gucci store fell through as Dante blipped out of existence. Elroy had a scuffle with Minnie after finding out that she killed the Lloyd. And Laverna is still alive because magic, I don't know. Um, she remembers seeing Victor and Maldad, but we don't know why she's still here. I know, I know why. I, I know why. Um, but yeah. Carton, uh, took, Carton and Elroy, uh, um, took Laverna's advice because, uh, many wanted to go to Landry's, but Laverna said, nah, Landry's is shit, let's go to Rainforest Cafe instead. And, um, this is where the bulk of the session happened. I wrote this excerpt, um, here, I'll read it to you. It was in Fun Facts, that's pretty important. Um, that's a riddle, uh... The OGs used to rule street, then they got old. Popular MMOs got sent to prison for always treating his soldiers. He swears it was set up by PewDiePie and Stampy Longhead, but they deny it. Although if you ask them anything about what happened that warm Tuesday night, well, who really knows if Stampy's cops were dipped off and paid a bit more to make sure that they reached the top and Pew's men uh, gave popular MMOs the detail on, details on the job, or not. Who really knows? PewDiePie, the former king, still the king if you ask some people, retired after what happened in Sky, after what happened to Sky to Minecraft. The gang, the gang known as Dream SMP, they were on the rise. A man by the name of Tommy in it, uh, simply took an opportunity and he killed poor and unsuspecting Sky to his Minecraft. Pewds couldn't handle the pressure, told Dan TDM to run the gang however he could, but Pewds is now supposedly in a quote unquote coma after an unfortunate fall he had from his third floor window. What people, what people won't say is how they, uh, was how there was clearly forced entry. And he was clearly beaten by Dan's close friend, Captain Sparkles, before being thrown from said window. I know. I was there. I saw this all go down and did nothing. Jelly tried to go clean with his business. And, uh, indeed up, they're selling, they're selling out. He's a disgrace to the gang. No one. 
no one that we know has tried an attempt on his life. Um, yeah, it'd be a waste of resources. It'd be a waste of resources if you'd asked me. Where does this leave the OGs now? It's a shell. They're a shell of the former selves. Dan's running it into the ground. After what he made Captain Sparkles do. He killed Jay Schlatt, you know. Cap's fucking paranoid about the whole thing. Saying something about hearing speed running music. We all know he got one foul out the door, the other on its way to Devil Town. And Stampy. Stampy's just scared as the rest of you, as the rest of us. But, you know, Dan. Dan always has a plan. Some twisted Dan plan. The Dream SMP has taken our territory. The way I see it, we can either jump ship and join or die. That's an excerpt from the capital known as Markiplier. I am very proud of that. Well, prouder than I should be. Um, anyway. Um, so after, it, it apparently was, uh, Minnie's birthday. This is also called the 9-11 incident. Um, and the entire Rainforest Cafe staff just comes bursting out, trampling over people and tables and food, and holding real molten lava in a cake, and just, like, sets it down. Um, uh, then the chef ends up dying, and the Dream SMP shows up, it's like, money and Elroy <laughs> Elroy casts grease and then fireballs them killing the dream SMP instantly <laughs> creating a massive power vacuum which um you remember Dami? well <sighs> Stampy Longhead appears and he's like listen I don't know who you guys are. I don't care. I don't care. It's a whole found world out there, and this is by and I need help. That's called a plot a plot hook, and um, it's one that they didn't take. Uh, they ended up um stepping up from behind. Stampy was Dommy, you know, from way back when, and also plot Mac Guffin. This timeline's version of him, anyway. Um, and yeah, they return back to the, to the store, and well, not the store, the town, and rob the Gucci store at night. Um, they tried to rob the Gucci store at night, and they did, but uh, this is where the 9 11 incident part comes into play. As the city was practically on fire because Ferdin's, one of Maldad's horsemen, just went on a rampage, destroying everything in, in her wake. Um, they realized that Ferdin's was in the museum now, and there really wasn't anything that they could do um, because they went to the Gucci store to um, get Gucci close to rob the museum, but... C'est la vie. It is what it is. That's life. Um, sometimes you just rob the Gucci store at night. And, uh, yeah. Um, we were told to wait seven minutes for Carton, and it took a little more than seven minutes, but, you know, it's whatever. We had to hurry up the fight, and, um, after a very tense fight, Elwer and Locke stand, and, um, and Dante has a magical tarot deck now. Um, Dante drew the card, drew a card, I believe it was called the Hermit. The Hermit's power was to erase anything. So, going into God mode, um, an army of, an army of crows appeared as Dante erased, um, the Bursala sacks, uh, in Verdon's knees, ca causing her to fall to the ground before erasing her Achilles tendons in her eyes. The crows ripped her apart, and yeah. Um, the session ended with the party eating leftover Rainforest Cafe. I'll read the final recaps, like, tomorrow, along with the epilogue. 
or when I have the chance. This is already an hour. I'm tired.